NBA, where two players yesterday announced they're opting out of the league's restart. They are Blazers forward Trevor Ariza, who's committing to a one-month visitation window with his young son, and soon-to-be free agent Davis Bertans of the uh, Wizards, who will sit out as a safety precaution. He's had two previous ACL injuries, and he is going to be a free agent during the offseason, which is this year going to come in a very unusual way. And there's a financial component here. Both players will lose some money. Bertans, assuming the Wizards don't make the playoffs, will lose over $500,000. For Ariza, he'll lose a minimum of a million, and it would almost double if the Blazers were to make the playoffs. So let's bring Jay Williams into this conversation. And, and Jay, you're a former player, obviously, and you've been watching all of this closely. Mm -hmm. What did you think when you saw these two players, and tomorrow is the deadline by which players would have to pull out, there could wind up being more, when you saw these players deciding we're not going? That the NBA is living in real time, a quote said by Reed Hoffman, Reed Hoffman the founder of LinkedIn, that sometimes you have to assemble the plane after you've jumped off the cliff. And that's what the NBA is trying to do. And if you're a player right now, you have to look at this thing holistically, Greeny. And if I'm putting my player hat on, uh, I understand it's a series of ebbs and flows. But I'm not sure I'm leaning towards wanting to play in Orlando right now. If you're paying attention to the landscape, Orlando Pride, uh, the you know the soccer team down there has pulled out of the NWSL, uh, National Women's Soccer League. They're not participating because COVID. Uh, their numbers have gone up on their team. You're seeing a spike that's happened over the last couple of weeks. Even if you look at the health mandate by the NBA, Disney employees are allowed to go to facilities, service players, and then go back home towards their families right now. And there's a there's a lot of gaps here. And uh, on, on top of the social injustice and the systemic racism that players are weighing if they want to play or not, you, you, you compound that with COVID-19 and the spike that's happening in Orlando. Um, I'm not sure I want to go down to a hot spot and participate in a place where I could not only get infected, but also if my family member is there or if, you know people I'm allowed to see later can get affected as well. This is um, I'm leaning towards not playing if I'm a player. I hear you, and I certainly understand it. And we had Woj on earlier, and he said that in both cases of the two players we're talking about here, Bertans um, and Ariza, that the teams fully understood their decisions and are supportive of them and all of that. But I just wonder, how much of that are you hearing from others? You, you broke down, there are, there are at least three reasons I can think of, and there are probably more. There is health related to COVID. There is injury-related uh, concerns based upon a quick restart and how, how fast all of it will come together. And, of course, the social justice piece of this. How much of that are you hearing from other players that you think may wind up being reluctant and may decide tomorrow not to go? Uh, a lot of players, and, but Greeny, more importantly, on top of that, I'm hearing confusion. And I think I speak for a lot of people here, and I try to stay as informed as possible. I know you read a lot, too. You know for a fact that there are spikes happening in Florida. Is that due to an increase of testing? Um, you hear reports that sometimes you know testing is getting you know more uh, prone. But you know, it's how does that correlate? I think so many things are being politicized and weaponized that it leaves the everyday person trying to fend for themselves and they come down to making their own personal decision. And I, I know that the NBA is trying to do their best job and I do have trust in Adam Silver. Uh, if, you're, if you're an everyday citizen and if you're an NBA player, it, it's hard to weigh all these. What are the actual facts? And those are things that people are still conflating. And exactly what is life going to be like in the bubble and just how secure will life be in the bubble? All those things are decisions that have to get made. But in the end, the biggest stars in the sport, it would seem, and for the most part, people tend to follow them. The biggest stars yep. in the sport, it would seem, Jay, are going to go back and play. And there will be a restart, right? It, for all of these concerns, and they are valid, every single one of them is valid. They're going to restart this thing and they're going to try and, and put together a season and put together a championship. I, you know, look, and, and you know, I was on a conversation with Stephen A. the other day on First Take, and we were talking about potentially moving locations. You know, if Orlando is a hotbed, could they move locations? And I, I know from a couple of people I've spoken to, it's not realistic for them to move locations. The location is in Orlando. It's happening at Disney World, and they're going to do their best to safeguard this entire establishment, to keep it in the bubble. And maybe one of the things you, you have to do, probably, Greeny, is if you are a Disney employee, if you are going to be on that campus, maybe you get paid overtime and you don't go back home to see your family. You are in the bubble. Once you get in the bubble, you are locked in the bubble and there is no leaving it. We'll see how all of that winds up playing out. Jay,